Upshift isn't just a bodybuilding series. It's an opportunity for you guys to witness what happens when work ethic and passion combines. Last year, I took you along on the journey. This year, I'm gonna do the same, but even better. Okay. All right, guys, welcome back to Upshift. We're gonna start this episode off with a little bit of a prep update. As now we are coming into 13 weeks into the process altogether, which seems insane because it's just flown by like that. And that's something quite often happens with preps is it just time seems to pass so quickly, especially when you're just enjoying the day-to-day -day processes. It just seems to snap past. So 13 weeks deep, I started this prep at 201.2 pounds. That's my heaviest weigh-in. Albeit it was a weigh-in that actually was like post pizza, ice cream, some cookies. So it's like kind of like a false 201, but let's just say I started at 201. And uh, this morning I was actually at 172.8, which is my last lightest weigh in so far. So pretty much calling that, you know, 30 pounds down in, a, in about 13, 14 weeks. So comparative to, to previous preps, it has certainly been a lot more aggressive out of the gate, which is finally something that I wanted to nail like being aggressive out of that, that initial period into, into the process, just getting some weight off, getting moving, getting, getting going quicker than I have done before. Because I think what's been the issue in the past is that especially last year, uh, having come off the back of a two year off season, I really didn't know where my stage weight was gonna be at all. So I had to kind of predict it on the way down. And as a byproduct of that, with that prediction process in play, I was sort of trying to second guess how much I had to really lose per week. It was like 0 0.5, 0 0.2. It started to get a bit slower towards, towards sort of the middle point when in reality I could have kept going. I could have kept that pace up um, and really got to a point which is the goal for this specific prep, which is to actually get ready early. And, you know, maybe a bit of a topic of discussion because recently everyone's been talking about this getting ready early thing, you know? And, and I think in the natural community, it's definitely a little bit bigger now because people have found that the look certainly improves when you get ready and you get food up, you remove that diet fatigue, you remove the training fatigue, you know, your training's at rock bottom volume, your food's high, especially carbohydrates, and you're cruising into, into that first show, potentially, or even a later show with a reverse diet approach if you're doing qualifiers. Um, so this is definitely a common approach, but what seems to be happening now is that people are getting ready like even earlier than what the goal is. So they're getting ready like eight weeks out, nine weeks out, 10 weeks out, and then trying to sustain stage condition all the way into the show. So that's definitely not my plan and I won't be there because I'm not going to be ready in three weeks. But the goal is to be ready around about four weeks out. And I hope to be able to sort of prove that this method can, can work by doing so. And then at four weeks out, bringing up food, predominantly carbohydrates. You'll see my food get a lot, lot higher than it is right now, because right now it's at its lowest. We'll drive up calories, we'll drop off training fatigue, we'll sit at very, very low volume training, um, maybe direct a little bit more volume into the weaker body parts and potentially lost a little bit of volume with that final dig for conditioning, um, which is something that I noticed even from the condition I hit last year, when I put some more food in and I started training my arms more frequently, giving them a little bit more volume, a little bit more attention, I noticed them immediately have that aesthetic appearance, obviously increased fullness, improvements to all of my front poses happened like that. So that's something I was like, when I sat down at the end of last year, I was like, that's what I need to nail, but I need to nail that not in the post-show window, I need to nail it in the pre-show window. You know, I need to be in that position to be able to work up food uh, before the show. So we're on track for that, which is good. So from a training standpoint, um, today's push, which is a session that obviously breeds a lot of a uh, bit more of uh, anxiety beforehand with, with a diet, just because it is the session in which we do see majoritively the most significant shift in performance, especially initially as you drop some weight. Um, but 30 pounds down, I'm, I'm pretty much doing a decent job at strength retention. Um, and uh, what we will get into later today in, in, this, in this video is, is sort of how I am approaching push in general because it definitely is different to last time. Last time I would have said I've retained performance, but I would have retained performance in a different way into, into which I'm retaining it now. You know, now it's actually quality 
holding a performance with immaculate execution or as close to as I can. Um, whereas, you know, last time it was creating false leverages, changing exercises too frequently, um, you know, moving weight from A to B, but moving it in a shorter range, you know. So what you'll see today is, is the way that I have really, really thought methodically about training push. And uh, hopefully you can take something from that as well. But yeah, as a whole, to wrap up sort of where we're at right now, very happy, content with, with how things are going. And it's just a case of embracing the suck a little bit over the next sort of six, seven weeks. It's going to get a little bit more difficult. Um, right now it feels, to be honest, quite comfortable. But I say that under bated breath because at some point I know it's going to get once I get into the 160s, bear in mind my stage weight last year was like 162, 163. I, I know that's where it's going to get a little bit sticky. I'm going to get like hunger through majority of the day, not just the end, you know, things like this. But we bodybuild for a reason. Bodybuild because I, mean, I enjoy it. Uh, so all of these things that come and, 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 and exist within your day, you've got to think, kind of think like, I'm doing this because... I want to do it, you know, uh, not, not because I'm forced to, um, it's not my job, you know, my job is coaching, so I could stop bodybuilding myself if I wanted to, but um, no, I, lo I love it, so uh, we're going to keep going, so I hope, I hope you guys are enjoying the journey so far, and like I said, we will catch you in the gym for Push Today. Okay guys, so as suggested earlier in the video, we're gonna be rolling through four points, four key points. And of course there's many more potentially, but four key points that I think certainly need to come into consideration when we're looking at weak point training. And the specificity here is obviously going to be for pretty much everything in the, in the push day. So chest, shoulders, triceps, and we'll include biceps as well because arms and just my general top line has been a massive focus for me over the course of my small off season and an area that I do think I have made improvements. So point one, funnily enough, is actually self-awareness. I think this is a huge one that many people just don't consider is are you actually aware where you're going wrong? And are you willing enough to actually say to yourself, okay, I need, I need, I need to look in a different scope here and a lot of people spend so much time spinning wheels because they're so driven by their own egos in bodybuilding that they think they're always right. And um, this, is, this is just so common and uh, it's, it's hard to overcome, but when you're self-aware enough to reach out for help or to take on board other people's advice, it really, really makes a massive difference in terms of creating leverage for you as an athlete. So for me, at the end of last year, I said to myself, where have I gone wrong? I watched back through several bits of footage of training, through push days especially, and I noticed one thing. I was trying to keep up with Cuba on pressing, and the reality is, on the way down as I was losing body fat, it's just not really gonna happen, you know? Like, there was a lot of shifts in my execution in order to try and retain performance, and I, at the end of the day, I, I couldn't keep up, you know, so realistically I had to take a step back and I even sort of started pretty much sending all of my presses across to a few people that I trust, including Cuba, just to get a second eye on things, you know, the same way that I have my most elite level of clients send across training footage for, to me. It's because they're self-aware enough to know that they can make small improvements and tweaks. So taking that ownership taking that bias, taking that thought process of thinking, right, I can improve. You know, there's something that can be changed here uh, was the biggest step that I took initially to start making these changes. Point number two is execution. This is the baseline of everything. It's fundamental. Without execution, we can't go anywhere. A lot of people will go straight into increasing volume, straight into increasing um, total frequency across a week. 
they won't even think once about execution because they'll think that they've nailed it. Again, this is where self-awareness is so key. It's because once you have the self-awareness that you can improve your execution, that's where you can set a new baseline. So, especially across presses, what did I look to do? So, a lot of what was going wrong for me was actually within range of motion. So, as a result of trying to keep up with, with my training partners, or as a result of trying to keep too much weight on the bar, or in the dumbbells, I was just cutting range. Cutting range here and there, and it all adds up. So what I did was I found movements where I could take them to a large range, a standardized range. And this is not like you'll see on that high incline Smith. I'm not coming all the way down to my collarbone because I found I lost stability of the bar in that position, but I'm coming below my chin every single rep. And on quite a few of my sets in the past, I'd be coming up to like nose level, then eye level, then forehead, but I'm retaining numbers, right? But am I? You know, I wasn't, you know? So that standardization of the baseline of execution is something that's been fundamental this whole off season. The range of motion, good control, and also combining that with intent. So the intent within your execution is important. You need to think about what is the specific goal of every single exercise. I've talked about this a lot within back training, but within, within push workouts, are we trying to emphasize delts or chest? So when we're emphasizing chest, are we packing the chest in front of the delts? Are we keeping it up in front of the delts the whole time? You know, you'll see on my chest presses, I'm pulling my chest up so it's ahead of my delts. I'm keeping it engaged, I'm keeping it worked. I'm making sure I'm standardizing range on the prime incline today by dead stopping at the bottom. I'm doing all of these things, the small things that add up, but they've been set as a baseline months and months in the past that is now cross-transferred to the deficit. Um, we may potentially, in, in the session today itself, talk through a few little cues here and there, but I think you've heard me enough talk about cues for execution, but I wanna just remind you guys how important it is to set that baseline across the board when it does come to execution. Point number three is exercise sequence. So this is essentially the order in which you place exercises. When I've looked at a lot of my training this year, I knew that I wanted to actually prioritize my chest a little, a little bit ahead of my delts. So in the improvements phase of this uh, off season that I had prior to this prep, I had both of my push days programmed to start with all my pec dominant work. So it'd always be a pec deck or a cuffed incline fly followed by a chest dominant press. You won't actually see that in today's session purely because I've moved to one chest focus and one delt focus just to separate those two sessions. But during the improvement stage, which I was in a surplus and I could make improvements, I prioritized all of my chest pressing. So when you're looking at exercise sequence, if you've got a weak body part, let's try and play some priority principle to that body part. Let's put it first. Let's put it when you're fresh. Um, we talk a lot about neurological fatigue or neural drive in sessions. Essentially, it's a fancy way of saying the amount of focus that you apply within a certain workout. So your focus is always gonna be at the peak level when you begin training, and it's gonna to start to drop off and diminish throughout the session. If we apply the maximum amount of focus towards your weaker areas at the beginning, we're gonna probably get the best mind-muscle connection, the best internal feel, and as a result, the best opportunity for overload, which will produce growth. So that's really where I've put my focus, and it, and it definitely has paid off. So exercise sequence is something that you potentially can think about implementing into your sessions in order to, to rinse the best out of them for your weaker areas. Finally, and most importantly, this is in order. This is not just four random points. This fourth point is the fourth, and it's the fourth for a reason. It's volume, okay? And this ties in with frequency as well. This is the last thing you need to think about. A lot of people, like I said, will jump the gun and go straight to increasing volume. The issue is, I have a lot of people that will come to me and they'll say, I can do more, I can do more, I can do more sets. Um, but their baseline of execution and their self-awareness of realizing that they need to improve isn't there. They have not factored in the fact that the volume that they are performing is not at an efficient level yet. So there's no point in adding more. All you're doing is adding like work that's already suboptimal on top of suboptimal work. 
So it's just not adding up to anything net that's gonna produce a positive stimulus. So volume as a whole for us is something that I'll only add when the quality is absolutely insured. You know, it's like you wouldn't produce, you wouldn't go and, 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 and buy or produce a thousand t-shirts when you haven't quality tested the batch that you're gonna produce. You know, it's very similar in training. You need to quality check your effort and your work and your intensity before you start adding more to the equation. So set that baseline. This is why I'll always start you know, new clients or people that I'm working with on very low volume thre uh, thresholds and low volume setups because we get to really, really find where that baseline is. We set that baseline perfectly and then we progress up from there. And you may well be able to handle more volume than me. You know, you may well have a, a, an increased degree of recovery capacity, especially right now with me being in a diet, you may be able to do more. Um, but the baseline is, is so fundamental for that process to then be, you know, added to. So don't jump the gun to volume. Make sure that that is slowly titrated up once everything else is in play. Uh, good push day today, very good. Very good, yeah. So, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, posing, you did a little bit of pose post workout, might put some of it in. I'm just trying to find like a place for when we come every 10 days to Normanton, where it's uh, kind of like a nice standardized spot like the urinals at Ultraflex. See, the thing is, Ultraflex and those urinals, I know exactly how I'm meant to look. And uh, trying to find a spot here that works is sometimes quite difficult in a new gym. But I think we found here that, that works okay, that we can take a few and just sort of see where things are at in comparison to the last 10 days. Um, legs are super, super sore today from yesterday's leg session. But other than that, things are on track. So, um, yeah, they're in a good place for, for where I need to be. The next 10 pounds will be uh, pretty interesting. So follow along as always, guys. Appreciate it. Hopefully the, uh, hopefully the tips help. And of course, any, any questions, any queries on the session, drop them below and uh, we will speak soon.